decided sometimes to uh, yeah sometimes who's going to the fireworks we would go down <laughs> crowded yes isn't there i haven't been for the summer yet but isn't there a stolen Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked at the weather report for tonight to see. I think I like they had fireworks somewhere last night. Yeah, I could hear them. Yeah, I could hear them where they were. Well, and Sugden Park. Which isn't far from here yeah. is doing something. Yeah. Unless I read it wrong, is it tonight? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, was that last night? It felt like it was all day. You know, food trucks and oh yeah. Stuff. I'm always. I always feel a little disjointed when I'm not. I grew up on a small lake in northern New Jersey on July 4th. It's always the big kickoff. Memorial weekend a little bit, but July 4th was always the real big kickoff for summer. And um, just everybody, the lake's small enough where it's all small crafts, so no big motors or anything. So then everyone just kind of went dot to dot to dot, you know, like so. You'd go to this person's party for a little while, yeah. <laughs> and it was just so I always feel a little like out of whack when I'm not at the lake, yeah. and I'm usually there for July Fourth, but it wasn't going to work out this year. My nephew is still living with my dad, uh, and uh, then my stepfather's house is actually the house where I grew up. Oh, okay. He had married my mom, and uh, then unfortunately, mom passed away, but he stayed in the house, so. We're welcome anytime, but his brother and sister in law are building a house right now oh, and it's delayed. Delicious. So they're homeless. So they're <laughs> staying now oh. with uh, with my stepdad. So now the we have no we have no place to squeeze out. Yes, we got squeezed out this summer. <laughs> Is it still happening though? Is that the yes. scene up there for the fourth of July? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And interestingly, they there's this small group that have gotten together and have really perfected a fireworks show oh, okay. like like really good yeah. and um they set it off apparently last night or this on the second instead of doing it today so i don't know what's up with that because that's definitely a deviation from past years maybe the, maybe the <laughs> local police were on to that right <laughs> they thought they'd throw them on the uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Couple people online. That's good. For one. <laughs> Is that Deb? Yep. Hi, Deb. How are you? I'm well. Thank you very much. Have a good. good. I love your pop. Oh. Look, she looks very patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> Got <her> on. <laughs> well done. All right. Well, let's come to a seated. Come to see it to start. I was thinking, well, what's appropriate for a July 4th <laughs> themed yoga class? And the first thing that came to mind was, uh, well, the word freedom. And then it led me to, you know, using yoga to sort of free our minds from stress and worry and um, also our bodies to free our bodies of stress and hip openers <laughs> are a great way to do that. So um, segue there. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so as it relates to uh, the asana work <laughs> and connecting mind and, and body. So, so yeah, so let's tune in, let's close our eyes, take a few moments to ground and be in this space together, share our energies together. Deep inhale through both nostrils. Sigh it out through the mouth. Another inhale like that. Inhale through the nose. Sigh it out through the mouth.
Let your breath come to its natural state and follow the inhales and exhales. Do a little body scan, check in with your sits bones, feel them root down. See if you can stretch the spine just a little bit more toward the sky. As we begin to let our seat root us, Allow the parts of our body to just settle into this stillness for a few moments. Begin to notice your thoughts. Are they whirling around this morning? Are they in a calmer state? And no judgment, just noticing how they are this morning. When we use our practice to free our minds from chatter or monkey mind or whatever you like to call it, it helps to focus on one single object. And in this case, try and focus on your breath. So let's move into, <clears throat> excuse me, manipulating the breath a little bit. Deeper inhale through the nose, <clears throat> inhale. And now retain the breath. Exhale it out through the nose. Follow the breath, inhale through the nose and retain it and exhale through the nose. And as you do this, notice how the spine reacts to your breath. So inhale, retain, and exhale. So there's a natural unfurling of the spine. So as we inhale, you feel the rib cage expand, the lungs expand, the spine interacts with that. And then as you exhale, there's a contraction. So a few more rounds at whatever count you're comfortable with on your inhale and holding. And then on your exhale. Take one more round. And then return to an actual breath. And bring your hands to your heart center. So now adding the sound of OM, creating this vibratory effect in our body, adding that to this mindfulness of the breath. So think of the sound of OM as it's spelled, which is A-U-M. So making the A, ah, U, the M is bringing your lips together. And then the silent part after you finish the OM. 
So try and with your own today, think about the three letters that make up the sound. So, ah. Uh, And then after the third ohm, we'll sit in silence for a few moments to allow you time to feel any sensations from creating that vibratory effect, vibratory sound. So take a full inhale, exhale it fully out. Inhale. Uh, And then set your intention this morning as it relates to freeing yourself of something. If it's chatter in the mind, or if it's stress and part of your body that you want to focus on, set your intention as it relates to freeing yourself of whatever's blocking you, whatever obstacle might be in your way, to ultimately find contentment, or in Sanskrit, santosha. But here are your eyes open, coming back to the space, and let's move on to our backs. We'll do a little bit of work <clears throat> to stretch, begin to open up the hips and also work on our core strength a little bit. So come to lie on your back fully and just stretch the arms overhead. Point your toes, get nice and long, feel that natural arch in your back form and then draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. And then extend your legs straight out onto the mat again. Float the arms overhead. And one more time, bringing the knees into the chest. This time, if you didn't do it the last time, bring your forehead up to your knees and feel that stretch in the back of your neck. Hang out there for a couple of breaths, really breathing into that cervical spine area. And then lower the head back down to the mat. Keep your right knee hugged in and extend your left leg out onto the mat. Flex that left foot. Left foot. <laughs> So in keeping that left leg active, press through the heel of that left foot. And now see if you can spiral your left thigh inward a little bit. Not, not dramatic, like more energetically feel it spiral inward to help your pelvis expand a little bit. And now make a big circle, a couple circles with your right knee out to the side, to center, bringing it toward the left leg. And then reverse that circle. And 
And then draw that right knee into your chest, keeping the left leg active. Keep that left foot flat. Interlace your fingers behind your right thigh and slowly extend that right leg. It doesn't have to go to straight. Just getting a morning wake up for our hamstring. Keep trying to energetically spiral that left inner thigh to help your sacrum expand, your pelvis expand. And now point that right foot. Flex the right foot. Point and flex. Creating different stretch sensation in that right leg. And then draw that right knee into the chest. Let the right knee drop out to the side, sole of the right foot coming to the inside of the left leg. If it's by the left thigh, that's fine. If, it, if you need to move it a little lower, just not on the knee. So either the thigh or lower by the calf. And maybe hands can rest on the hips or maybe float the arms overhead as if you're growing the branches of your tree, but on your back. And then bend the elbows coming into more like cactus arms. Allow the chest to open. Allow the shoulders to relax, soften away from the ears. And then bring the palms and the elbows together above the chest. Reach down for that right knee, hug it back in. Two more circles, take it out to the right, circle it in. Two to this direction and then reverse the direction. Draw that left knee in to meet the right and extend the right leg out onto the mat. Flex that right foot. Try and spiral the right thigh inward. And do your best to keep that right leg active as we work on opening the left. So take this left knee out to the left side, circle it in. Another circle in the same direction. Reversing the direction of the circle. And when you come back to center, interlace your fingers behind that left thigh. Slowly extend the left leg. Again, just a morning wake up for this left hamstring. Keep that right leg active, push through the heel. And now point and flex, point, flex, point and flex. And then draw that left knee back into your chest. Let it drop out to the floor, to the left side. Try and match what you did on the other side and then maybe bring the hands to rest on your hips. Keep that right leg active and then float the arms overhead. Again, growing the branches of your tree. And then drawing the elbows down a little bit to make cactus arms, feeling that expansiveness across the chest and heart space. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. And then draw the palms toward each other, elbows toward each other. Reach down for that left knee and bring it back to center. Hug both knees into your chest. And then extend the legs out long onto the mat. So flex both feet and then start to lift your chin toward your chest to look at your feet. And a slight engagement in the abdomens. 
is starting to get fired up. And then float the arms up a little bit higher to lift the chest up, creating a deeper engagement in the abdominal area. Feel the navel engaged. And now we'll add lifting the heels an inch off the mat. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. One more inhale, exhale, lower the feet, lower the head, lower the arms and rest. Full breath, inhale and exhale. One more, flex the feet. Start to lift your chest toward your chin and already you should be feeling a little engagement in the lower abdominal area. And then we add the arms and lift the chest a little higher. And now lift the heels off the mat. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in and exhale. Release, inhale, side out through the mouth. <sighs> Hug the knees into your chest, but keep the sacrum on the mat so that when you rock from side to side, you can feel the massage in that low back. So the bony part of the low back getting a massage. Draw your forehead up to your knees, knees toward your forehead. Make a nice tight yogi ball. And then take your hands underneath your knees. Begin to rock forward and back at least a few times. Get a nice massage for the whole spine. And then when you come up, plant your feet. Have your knees about a fist distance apart. And then we're gonna wrap our left arm in front of the knees, take the right hand behind, coming into TP twist. So try and keep your knees in line with each other, feet rooting down, and your head just starting to look over the right shoulder. Think about lengthening the spine on the inhale. Gently moving into the twist a little deeper on the exhale. And then on the next inhale, you'll come through center and wrap the right arm around. Left hand comes behind that left sit bone and use it almost like a kickstand. So inhale and lengthen the spine, exhale. Starting to look over that left shoulder, getting a little bit of stretch for our neck. And then inhale back to center and stretch the legs out in front of you. Flex the feet, shake out the legs a little bit. And we'll do one more spinal twist. Bring the right knee into your chest and place it over the left leg. Right hand comes behind. Inhale, left arm up by the ear. Get nice and long. Really feel your spine reaching up. And then twist to the right. Pressing into the toe ball mound of this right foot. And keeping left foot flexed. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Spinal twists or abdominal twists help free us of toxins in the body. So on your exhale, release anything that you no longer want stored in the body. This next inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, counter twist to the left. 
back to center and release that right leg, shake out the legs a little bit. Windshield wiper the feet from side to side. Sit up nice and tall, drawing that left knee into the chest, place it over the right. Left hand comes behind, flex the right foot. Inhale, right arm up. So really get that length to start and then move into the twist. And again, stretching the neck gently, softly, looking over that left shoulder. Feeling the twist come from our navel up. Protecting the lower back area, our lumbar spine. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in. And on your exhale, come through center, counter twist to the right. And back to center, releasing that left leg, shake out the legs a little bit more. Cross up the ankles and roll forward to tabletop. So hands and knees, check in with your alignment, knees in line with hips. Stack shoulders, elbows, and wrists, and draw the navel in, engage the core. Inhale, lift the crown of the head, tilt your tailbone up, coming into cow pose. On your exhale, round the spine, tuck chin to chest, tuck your tailbone. Inhale, through to cow. And exhale, into cat. Inhale into cow and exhale into cat. And then come back to neutral, take your knees wide, bring your toes to touch, let your seat drop towards your heels, extending arms out long in front of you and drop the forehead down to the mat and breathe. So our ujjayi breath, called the breath of victory, helps to modulate our practice. It's an inhale through the nose. And on the exhale, we place a constriction in the back of the throat. So almost creating, well, some refer to it as a Darth Vader sound. <laughs> I like to think of it as the ocean. And if you're unsure about that constriction, if you make the ha sound on your exhale, and then the second time you exhale, close your lips as you make the ha sound. One more full inhale and exhale, feeling the release of the low back. And then inhale your way back to tabletop. Bringing knees back in line with your hips. Inhale the right arm, lifting it up, opening this right chest. And then exhale, thread it under the left arm, thread the needle. And the left hand can stay where it is. Check in with your hips, make sure those are level. Or you can slide that left hand straight out to the top of your mat, getting a nice deeper stretch for the chest, the shoulder area. One more full inhale. And on your exhale, slide that left hand in close by the face. Press into it as you lift that right arm, open the right side of the chest, and then lower back down. Find neutral, draw the navel in. Inhale, left arm up, open that left side of the chest, and then thread the needle under the right arm, bringing the left side of the face down to the mat. 
Check in with your hips, make sure they're level, and then slide that right hand straight out to the top of the mat. And breathe. Notice what's going on with the left shoulder, the right shoulder. Slide that right hand back in close, pressing into it and then lifting the left arm up, opening that chest and back down to tabletop. Rotate your elbow creases so they face the top of the mat and then start to bend up the elbows, lowering your chest and chin down close to the mat and now press back up. Four more yogi push-ups. So keep your elbows in close, lower down, keep your hips up high, lift up, lower down. This is number three, and press back up, lower down, press back up. Last one, we can do it. <laughs> Lowering down and then pressing back up. Good job. Take the hands and handprint out in front of you. So the arms are stretching a little bit longer in front of us. Tuck your toes under and lift your knees and your shins off the mat. And then continue to straighten the legs as your hips lift. Coming into downward facing dog. So take a few moments to make some organic movements here. So maybe drop one heel and bend the knee of the other leg and alternate pedaling out your downward dog. If you wanna bend the knees, dropping them down toward the mat and then lifting the hips back up, you can do that. You can float forward to plank as well and then float back to downward facing dog. And then everybody find stillness. Soften the shoulders, let the head rest between the arms. Draw the navel in here, find that engagement in your core. Let your heels drop toward the mat a little bit more. And now lift your head so your gaze is between your hands and walk one footprint at a time up to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift up halfway and exhale, fold, bend your knees a lot and then roll up to standing. Inhale, the arms overhead, palms touch. And exhale, take the arms out wide, hinge at the hips. Come into Uttanasana with a long spine. Inhale, lift up halfway, find a flat back. Exhale, forward fold. This time lift with a flat back, take the arms out wide, press into the feet, use your core as you come to standing. Exhale, hinge at your hips, take the arms out wide, float down. Uttanasana, bend your knees a lot and roll up to standing. Let the head be the last to come up. Inhale, interlace the fingers now over your head and then take your elbows out wide, bring the hands behind your back. Feel the chest opening and lifting. Breathe in. Breathe out, maybe turn the gaze to look up, creating a little arch for the upper back, elbows out wide, and then return back to neutral. Bring the elbows in close, tuck your chin to your chest. Continue like this. So inhale on your exhale, lower a little bit more. Inhale, lower a little bit more. Inhale, lower a little bit more. Coming into our forward fold, bend your knees a lot. Let your belly rest on your knees. Take your elbows out wide. And now lift your chest just a 
a little bit so your belly comes off your thighs, modified chair. Inhale, straighten the legs, come to standing and Tadasana. Close the eyes, take a moment to feel the energy. Root down through the feet. Feel the lengthening up through the legs and then the spine. And then reopen the eyes, float the arms overhead. Exhale, lowering into Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your hands, take the right leg back, find low lunge. Place your palms on the mat, take the left leg back, find plank. Lower your knees, hug the elbows in as you lower chest and chin down, and then slide forward, come onto the belly. Hugging elbows in tight, press the tops of the feet into the mat. Inhale, lift up into cobra. And exhale, lower down, tuck your toes under, push your seat back to your heels and lift your hips up, downward facing dog. Inhale, draw the right knee into your chest. Step that right foot forward, low lunge. Inhale, left leg forward to meet the right. Come up halfway, flat back. And exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, palms touch. And exhale, hands to heart center. So this is moving through our classic sun salutation. Sweeping arms overhead, exhale, lowering down into Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands, and then step the left leg. Uh, did I just do that leg? Yeah, right leg back. Thank you, Satish. <laughs> and now plant the hands. Step the left leg back to plank. Lower knees, chest and chin. Inhale, slide onto the belly. Pressing up into cobra, keeping those elbows in toward the sides of your body and then lower down. Tuck your toes under, push your seat to your heels, downward facing dog. Inhale, draw the left knee into your chest as you step that left foot forward, low lunge. And then inhale the right foot forward to meet the left. Lifting up halfway, exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, palms touch, and exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana. Grab your blocks and place them at the lowest setting, top of the mat, just on either side of your feet. So Satish, try and turn them down to the lowest setting. Try them at the lowest setting, yeah. And then bring your toes just where the blocks start in line with, with the blocks. Inhale, float the arms overhead. Exhale, diving forward into Uttanasana, hands on the block. And then bend the knees and step both feet back to plank pose with your hands on the blocks. Wrap the pinkies and the thumbs around the edges of the block. Strong core. Breathe in and breathe out. Another breath in and then exhale, lower the knees, hug the elbows in as you lower just chest or your chin in front of, in between the blocks, and then slide onto your belly. Pressing up into cobra, and then exhale, lower down, push your seat back. Come into downward dog, hands on the blocks. See if maybe your heels can drop a little bit lower. 
Another breath, inhale. And exhale, look between the blocks. This is the fun part. <laughs> Bend the knees, squatting, and then jump the feet to inside the blocks. There we go. Lengthen to a flat back, so coming up halfway. And exhale, fold. So for Uttanasana, let's take an arm bind. So maybe hold opposite elbows. Or if you like to, if you like the feeling of interlacing the hands behind the back, so your choice. Let the head hang here. Feel the neck soften. And then release that bind. Float the arms out wide and overhead palms touch. Standing and then exhale, hands to heart center, to the asana. And just scoot the blocks forward off the mat. It's just a variation of a sun salutation using blocks and feeling that different extension in the arms and the spine that you can get with the hands on the blocks. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. And exhale, lowering down, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway. And then exhale, plant your hands and step the right leg back, low lunge. Grab your blocks, this time middle height, framing the left foot so that you can get a little bit more opening in the chest. And then drop that right knee down and curl the toe. Inhale, float the arms up. Anjani Asana, draw the elbows down, cactus arms. Interlace the fingers behind the head, little arch in the upper back. Maybe sink into that left knee a little deeper. So getting into the psoas muscle and this right hip flexor. And then releasing that deeper bend. Float the hands down by the blocks. Tuck the right toes under. Lift your hips and straighten both legs. Right heel lifted. So this is an extended pyramid pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out, rebend the left knee coming back to low lunge, drop the right knee again, and then half Hanumanasana. So slide the blocks back a little bit so they're under your shoulders and then turn the left toes up, coming on your left heel. Left leg straight, right hip in line with right knee. If you need to have the blocks higher, you can do it this way. And then see if you can hinge forward just a little bit at a time, deepening that stretch for the left hamstring. And then inhale to lift up. Plant that left foot, take the blocks to reframe the left foot, tuck the right toes under, and then step that right foot forward, lift up halfway. Take a full breath here, inhale. And then exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands on the blocks again, step the left leg back, low lunge. Finding low lunge, feel that chest opening. Dropping left knee down, uncurl the toe. Inhale, float the arms up. Anjani Asana. Soften your shoulders, bring your elbows out to the side. This time, sweep the hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers. Chest opening wide. Maybe deep in the bend in the right knee now. Stretching, deeper stretch for the psoas muscle in the hips. And then release. 
hands to the block. Tuck the left toes under, straighten both legs, extended pyramid pose. Left heel lifted, both legs straight. Breathe in and breathe out. Rebend that right knee, dropping left knee down and then moving into half Hanumanasana. So bring the blocks back, shift your hip. So your left hip in line with left knee, then turn your right toes up. So you're on the right heel and then maybe with each breath, Hinging forward, drawing the chest toward the right knee. And then lifting up again, replanting that right foot, slide the blocks forward, tuck the left toes under to lift up. This time, step back to downward facing dog. So your hands can be on the blocks or you can move the blocks out of the way and take the hands to the mat. Breathe in and breathe out. And let's everybody drop to knees. Let's take a child's pose in between. So your choice, you can bring, keep the knees close together and wrap the arms around the legs for more of a rounded child's pose, or you can extend the arms out in front. One more deep stretch for our hips. So we're gonna lift back up into downward dog. So begin on your inhale to lift up to tabletop and then tuck your toes under, lift your hips up. So we'll take pigeon this morning, starting in downward facing dog. Let's first move into three-legged dog. So lift your right leg, hip height. Draw the right knee to left elbow, and then inhale it back to down uh, three-legged dog. Draw the right knee in toward your nose. Lift it back up for three-legged dog. And now bring that right knee toward right wrist, and then slide the left leg back. So bring that right knee all the way to your right wrist. So you're sliding, keep your left toes under, slide that leg back. And now heel toe this right foot out a little bit so then you can sink your heel, your hips down. Take your block, slide it under the right hip if you need it. And then touch your fingertips and start in this lifted pigeon. We want our hips to be square to the front. We want our chest to remain open. If that's too much of a lift and you want to sink a little lower, you can remove the block. And then begin to walk the fingers out in front of you so that you're folding over that front leg with length in your spine. You can bring a block under the forehead. You can bring two blocks under the forehead if you want. Beautiful, everyone. Wonderful alignment. The pigeon, our hips want to stay square where we want the hips to be square facing the front of the room to get the deep opening. Try and soften shoulders. Feeling the unfurling of your spine 
with your breath. To lift up, walk your hands back in close by your legs. Tent your fingertips again, really feel that openness in the chest and then tuck the left toes under. And as you do, begin to lift your hips up, slide that right leg back and up into the air for three-legged dog. Lift it high, release that right hip and then lower it back down, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts to three-legged dog, and then bring that left knee to right elbow, and then lift it back up. Bring left knee to your nose, and lift it back up. And now bring left knee behind that left wrist, lowering it down to the mat. Slide the right foot back, sinking the hips down. So you want to get length in that right leg. So bring this left foot out as to where it's comfortable. It can stay on this deep angle. You can start working it toward 90 degrees, but that really changes the direction of your hips. So just go to where your edge is and then uncurl the toe. Start in the lifted pose, then walk your fingertips out. Lower into forearms. Use a block under the head, under the forehead, if that feels good. Mindful of keeping the hips squared forward. Beautiful, everyone. And yeah, if you wanna place that block under the left cheek, you can. Breathe in, breathe out. So freeing yourself of what no longer serves you. Freeing yourself of anything that's blocking you from contentment. Begin to lift up, bringing the fingertips, tensing them so you can feel that openness in your chest again and then planting the palms down, tucking right toes under, lift your hips high, slide that left leg back, lift it up in the air. Lower down, downward facing dog. If you'd like to take one more vinyasa, we can rock forward to plank, lower knees, chest, chin. Inhale, slide onto the belly, Pressing up in a cobra, or you could just hang out in downward dog if you're done. <laughs> Push back, seat to heels, lift the hips up, downward facing dog. And then look between your hands, walk or lightly hop the feet forward. Lift up halfway, and then grab your blocks. Place them on either side of your feet at the highest and then lift your heels up, coming onto your toes and then bend the knees, slowly lowering your seat down towards your heels, coming into a tiptoe, <laughs> a tiptoe squat. So you can keep your hands on the blocks or if you wanna play with balance, bringing hands to prayer to heart center. Keeping the thighs engaged, seat is lifted off your heels, or if you don't want to engage the thighs and just stretch the feet, you can lower the seat to the heels. 
Maybe close one eye. Close the other eye. <laughs> Maybe close both eyes. Oh. <laughs> and then we'll come to our seat. Good job, everyone. <laughs> come to lie on your back, hug your knees into your chest. Lower the feet to the mat. Setting up for bridge, we'll do, let's see what we have time for. We're running short on time. <laughs> Bring the block in between the thighs. So we'll do one bridge holding for eight. Make sure your heels are back towards your sits bones. Keep thighs hugging into the block as you lift your hips up. Keep your gaze and your nose facing the ceiling. And find that point where you can stay and then breathe in. Breathe out one. Breathe in. Breathe out two. Breathe in. Breathe out three. Breathe in. Breathe out four. Breathe in, breathe out five. Breathe in, breathe out six. Breathe in, breathe out seven. Breathe in, breathe out eight. Slowly lower one vertebrae at a time. Remove the block, actually, Take the block and now slide it under your sacrum at the lowest height. And then slowly extend one leg out onto the mat and then the other. So we're gonna get a nice psoas stretch here. So make sure the block feels like it's supporting your low back. And then float the arms overhead and surrender here, let your low back release on the block. Follow your breath from your low belly up to your chest. Back down, riding our breath. Let go of any clenching in the legs. Totally releasing and surrendering on the block. Opening up this front part of our body, our psoas muscle. Start to lift the arms up, lowering them to our sides. Bend one knee and then the other and remove the block out of the way. Draw the knees into your chest. Extend the feet up to the ceiling and cross right knee in front of left, bending the knees and then dropping knees over to the left side. Extend right arm out shoulder from the shoulder, palm face up. Left arm also extends, coming into our twist. Drawing knees back to center, extending the legs and releasing the, the legs and now crossing left knee in front of right. Bend at the knees and then drop the knees down over to the right. Arms still extending out from right in line with the shoulders.
feeling the support of the earth beneath us. Bring the knees back to center. Extend, release, and extend. Feet facing the ceiling. And then draw the knees into your chest. Extend one leg out onto the mat, and then the other. Finding Shavasana, final rest. So separating the legs a little bit where your feet are pointing more toward the top corners of your mat. And flex your feet, push through your heels to help lengthen your legs. So that when you release, now completely relax the legs, let the feet flop out. And hopefully you've created a little bit more space in your hip sockets. And let the arms come out to the side, palms face up. Try and press into the back of the head a little bit and then glide your shoulder blades under. These are just little adjustments you can do to help the body come into a deeper rest. And we don't have props available to us to support us and allow us to rest more deeply. We do it with our mind. So imagine The feeling of the arms on pillows. Imagine maybe a bolster under the knees. Wherever the body might feel like it needs a little bit of support to completely release. Imagine that you have that support there. Let go of any clenching. Free the body of any blockages. Completely surrendering to this rest pose.
Invite a deeper breath in. Feeling the rise and fall of the belly as the breath makes its way up to the lungs, filling up the rib cage, the heart space, and then back down, feeling the fall of the low belly. Invite small movements back in. Continue to deepen the breath. Maybe float the arms overhead for a long stretch. Draw the knees into the chest, rolling on to the right side and using that right arm as a pillow. And take a few breaths there to continue to awaken. When you're ready, pressing up to a seat. Come to Sukhasana, crossing the legs, keeping the eyes closed or at a soft gaze and then gently bow your head. Take a moment to thank yourself for coming onto your mat this morning. Recall your intention that you set. Maybe let that carry you through the day. As we celebrate America's birthday, the freedoms that come with it. Thank your yoga practice for helping you free blockages in your body and in your mind, allowing for greater creativity, expansiveness, compassion, and love. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Let's finish with the sound of OM. So take a full inhale and then exhale it out. And then inhale. Ah. Namaste. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, Deb, for joining us. So now with those hips wide open today. <laughs> right, don't fall down. Drink a lot of water. <laughs> and feel that freedom. I haven't done pigeon since before the pandemic. Really? Because my we haven't done stopped. It. We haven't done it? Well, if I had to do one on my own, yeah, I would never do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I just had teachers that didn't do it this since I've been here oh, because wow. my yoga class didn't meet anymore. Okay, I thought I thought we did it. Maybe maybe you weren't here a couple of those classes. Okay. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had it as the pose of the month at Love, where I teach. Oh. Yeah. So we practiced it a lot about three months ago and um and that bringing the knee um coming into it like this where you slide that forward and then slide that back is a much more accessible way to get into it and not worrying about having this come all the way out to 90 degrees you don't need that to come yeah. all the way out what that does is I mean, even I can't, it, without being too warm, like it, you know, it's, it's hard work on this hip flexor and it just doesn't need to be stressed in yeah. that way. Yeah. yeah. I would and you can, that. and you can work your way up. So with each pigeon, so, okay, my hips are low, my hips are facing forward. They're where they need to be. And then gradually, like, okay, so let me, next time I do pigeon, bring it up just a little bit and see where I'm at with that. Also, it really helps. Sometimes I stay, I shy away from it because we don't have blankets here or a bolster, but having the blanket under that left hip or the right hip, it really, really helps, you know? Um, so yeah, well, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll, 
play with pigeon all month. <laughs> you know, there might be something at home, even if it's even if it's you or yeah. whatever. Nobody knows if I just skip that part. Ah. <laughs> Only you know it. Deb, thank you. It was great. Thanks. A quick reminder. So I am here next Monday teaching, but then I'm going to be out the last two Mondays of the month traveling with the kids and then back August 1st. And yeah, Aiden starts school August 10th and then Julia 16th. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Enjoy the day, everybody. All thank right, you. Deb. Thank you. You thank too. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs>